Okay, in our last video, we looked at this related rates problem that involved a balloon, a perfectly spherical balloon being inflated so that the radius is increasing at a constant rate. And then we, we asked the question, well, what's the surface area doing? Uh, in particular, what's the surface area doing when the radius is 5 centimeters and when the radius is 10 centimeters? So if you didn't catch that, um, you can go back to the previous video in the calculus playlist and, and watch that if you want to see an explanation. Uh, I'm going to assume that we have seen this or that we have a general understanding of related rates before we tackle the next part of this problem, which is basically the exact same problem except this time this time we are interested in what the volume is doing instead. So exact same problem, exact same numbers, just what's the volume doing instead? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to first figure out well what are our variables in this problem. And one of the first variables we encounter is the volume. In fact, we want to know how fast it's changing. So we identify the, the variable V for volume. Uh, the next variable we run into is the radius, the radius of our balloon. Okay, we know that this radius is changing at a constant rate. And anytime you see in a related rates problem the word rate, it's usually referring to a derivative. And in this case, the rate of change, dr, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time, in this example, is 2 centimeters per second. Now we're interested in the rate of change of the volume, but we don't know that. So this is going to be our unknown. This is going to be the thing that we're solving for. Okay, now like in any related rates problem, once you've identified the variables and once you've identified all of your, your rates involved, you then have to re, uh, relate your variables in some form, form of an equation. So I, I have to relate V and R in an equation and the natural one is to use the volume for a sphere which should be 4 thirds pi r cubed <clears throat> okay so there it is I have just my two variables v and r um, everything looks good so it looks like we're ready to differentiate both sides if I differentiate the left hand side I get a dv dt and if I differentiate the right hand side, now I'm going to treat I'm going to treat this 4 thirds pi as just a great big constant. And the way the way you you differentiate a constant times a function, here's here's my constant and then my function I'm going to treat as r cubed. The derivative of a constant times a function is the constant multiplied by the derivative of the function and the derivative of r cubed is is 3 r squared now that's the derivative with respect to r but we have to use the chain rule here and the chain rule says you take the derivative with respect to r multiplied by the derivative with respect to t okay uh, now it looks like we can do some simplifying here before we substitute this 3 reduces with this 3 right here and we'll go ahead and rewrite this so it's a little cleaner as 4 4 pi r squared times dr dt okay the very last thing to do is just to substitute your known quantities in and solve for your unknowns. So what do we know? Um, let me write the dv dt here first. Well, we know we're interested in dv dt when, when this r right here is 5, 5 centimeters. So we go ahead and make the substitution and we say 4 pi, now here comes the substitution. The substitution, instead of r, we're going to write 5 okay times now here comes our other substitution what is dr dt and dr dt from from the problem uh, above is two two centimeters per second okay the very last thing to do is just to crunch all of these numbers and we can get this in terms of pi this is 25 25 times 2 is 50 and 50 times 4 
<clears throat> is 200, whoops, is 200. So 200 pi, now think about the units on this. We're talking about volume, so volume is a cubic unit. So we want centimeters cubed per second. You could plug this in your calculator if you'd like, if uh, if you want a, a decimal and, and have that have a little bit more meaning maybe. Um, now you can imagine what's going to happen if if we let the radius be 10. In other words, when the radius is 5, you can imagine blowing up a balloon. When the radius is 5, the volume is growing at this rate. So what is the volume doing when the radius is 10? Well, all we would need to do is, let's circle this so we don't confuse it with our, our further work here. So let's, let's come up here and let's substitute 10 in now for the radius. We get 4 pi times, here comes the substitution, times 2. So all I did was I came up here, changed the r to 10, my drdt is still 2, and all that's left to do is to crunch these numbers. So 10 squared is 100, times 2 is 200, times 4 is 800 pi. 800 pi, and again, the units on it would be centimeters cubed per second. And there you have it. Now, you can ask yourself uh, the natural question, what's the, what's the rate of change of the volume doing? In other words, is the rate of change increasing, is it decreasing, or is it constant? We know that the rate of change for the radius was a constant. It's always going to be 2 centimeters uh, per second. But look at what's happening to this dvdt. Looks like it got faster. Um, so you can talk actually about a little bit of acceleration. This happens to be positive acceleration. So there you have it. Uh, we, we looked at the rate of change of the volume when the radius is increasing at a constant rate and found out that it's actually increasing at a faster and faster rate. See you later.